All right, gang, welcome back. This is The Resistance. This is Corbett Report Radio, and my name is James Evan Pilato, your host and webmaster of the site and show MediaMonarchy.com, The Real News Remixed. And this is the second of three of our guest hosting slots for James Corbett while he is on vacation. Last week, we had Oregon Water Watch, and I warned you that it may get a lot grosser this time. Our man Adam Campbell in Nova Scotia has been a huge help posting and writing on foodworldorder.com, and that's really always been my idea about the media monarchy kingdom is to bring people in to help run and write for the sites, whether that's about food, whether that's about technology, whether that's about the occult or media or film or music, any of those things. I, I love them all, and I love to share information with people. It's always It's always been my passion. Adam in Nova Scotia also has his own site, and the article we are going to get into right here is posted originally on gutbrainmanipulation.blogspot.com, and you may recall that title coming from one of the first articles we took from Adam Campbell on Food World Order. Biosolids, Part 1. Portland must poop. Humanure and the farmers of 40 centuries. Since the beginning of life on Earth, the cycling and recycling of essential compounds and nutrients through the ecosystem has played an infinite number of evolutionary roles in the development of the Earth as a whole and to all those living things that inhabit it. The cycles are integral to defining the symbiosis that exists between all evolutionarily persistent biological processes. The six degrees of Kevin Bacon for the natural world, if you will. Everything is connected and yet disconnected via our earthly environment. As evolution advanced, life forms began to affect the Earth's environment. The cycles that had created the conditions from which life sprang slowly began to change and the Earth adapted to new conditions, as did its life forms. Those who couldn't, wouldn't, or didn't adapt, died. Waste products from one organism became food or a useful tool for others, until what began as a blade of grass or a bird was consumed by thousands of organisms in a long chain of biological environmental degradation to its useful parts and return to the environment via defecation or death to be reused as building blocks for more life. Such are the cycles of life-giving compounds and elements. Some are cycles of seconds, matters, minutes rather, or hours, and others billions of years, but all play important roles in providing for life on Earth whatever form that may take. Both fortunately and unfortunately, we as human beings now find ourselves in a technological position which allows us to have effects on our environment far beyond what the evolutionary action of plants filling the atmosphere with oxygen could accomplish in a similar time period. Technology and greed have quickened the pace and expanded the breadth of the potential effects living beings can have on our environment and all the other life forms in it. The old cultural practices of survival that have sustained communities for centuries are no longer as valued or as valid as they once were, and some of those practices have become dangerous in a world that does not understand their usefulness, importance, and modes of action or itself and its maladies. The persistence of the cultural practice of the dumbing down and collectivization of individuals through the public school system and media have helped ensure the collective apathy and ignorances that surround these issues. For 40 centuries, people and communities in the Eastern world found ways to recycle food, animal, and human remains in a safe and sanitary way. Those who worked the land for a living recognized some of the cycles that existed in their local environment and began to use those cycles to their advantage, creating and refining methods for the optimal use of their limited resources in a harsh world. The recognition that where animals defecated, things eventually grew was a major leap forward in the cultivation of food crops, and the more you understood those principles, the better your cultivation skills and the easier life became. The cycling of crop nutrients has been an obsession for the farming community, but since its discovery that obsession, that obsession has forked into multiple paths, including burning, composting, biodynamic composting, non-composting, petroleum-based fertilizers, and the use of biosolids to divert urban sewage from rivers, oceans, and landfills back into fields for production. These paths all have positive and negative consequences to their use as fertilizer for human food production when applied improperly or without due diligence or caution. Let's define and contrast two terms, compost the organic plant and animal matter that has been decomposed by organisms in the environment and recycled as a fertilizer and soil amendment. Depending on what the starting materials are and what you plan to apply it to, 
Compost can contain most, if not all, of the building blocks needed for healthy plants, soils, environments, and humans. Composting is the process in which living organisms and the heat produced consume, break down, and sterilize potentially hazardous organic materials into a useful, safe resource for farms, gardens, and therefore human life. Biosolids is a public relations term for sludge, which re refers to the residual semi-solid material left from industrial and sewage wastewater treatment processes whereby the public is sensitized to the idea of feces and encouraged to use centralized sanitary disposal systems, which have experts that will deal with problems so you don't have to. The waste streams for useful, non-useful, and dangerous waste are combined at the input of the system by the users and transported to a central treatment facility where expensive, complicated technological solutions are employed to then attempt to separate the aforementioned useful, non-useful, and dangerous waste in order to lessen the impacts of urban life on the environment. In the Western world, feces has for a long time been stigmatized and diverted from the compost stream, originally into rivers and oceans, then landfills. Out the window and onto the sidewalks was on its way to the Thames, if you were a Londoner in the 18th century, and now to centralized treatment facilities where waste is divided into that which is safe to be dumped into the rivers and oceans and that which isn't and ends up in landfills or on farms in the form of sludge, a.k.a. biosolids. But this wasn't always the case. For centuries, people dealt with their own waste in their own communities, on their own land, or through agreement to use another person's land safely and beneficially for all the parties involved. In 1909, American agronomist F.H. King toured China, Korea, and Japan, studying traditional fertilization, tillage, and general farming practices. He wrote his observations and findings in the book Farmers of Forty Centuries, or Permanent Agriculture in China, Korea, and Japan, published in 1911. This may have been the last generation doing it properly, for not long after industrialization and modernization began speeding up its creep into the East. In Chapter 9, The Utilization of Waste... F.H. King presents his observations regarding the recycling of human and animal fecal matter on farmland and the logic that led the people of China, Korea, and Japan to adopt and maintain such practices in contrast to how the Western world began and continues to deal with the same social issue. In one passage, King relays the sentiments of Dr. Arthur Stanley, health officer of the city of Shanghai, in his annual report for 1899, in which he states, quote, Regarding the bearing on the sanitation of Shanghai of the relationship between Eastern and Western hygiene, it may be said that if prolonged national life is indicative of sound sanitation, the Chinese are a race worthy of study by all who concern themselves with public health. While the ultra-civilized Western elaborates destructors for burning garbage at a financial loss and turns sewage into the sea, the Chinaman uses both for manure. He wastes nothing while the sacred duty of agriculture is uppermost in his mind. And in reality, recent bacterial work has shown that fecal matter and house refuse are best destroyed by returning them to clean soil, where natural purification takes place. The question of destroying garbage, I can, I, I think, can under present conditions in Shanghai be answered in a decided negative. While to adopt the water carriage system for sewage and turn it into the river whence the water supply is derived would be an act of sanitary suicide. It is best, therefore, to make use of what is good in Chinese hygiene, which demands respect, being, as it is, the product of an evolution extending for more than a thousand years before the Christian era. End quote. It certainly sounds like sane ideology when compared to our current system or its historic and ideological parent, that of 18th century England, as described by Tobias Smollett in 1771. He wrote, quote, If I would drink water, I must quaff the mawkish contents of an open aqueduct exposed to all manner of defilement, or swallow that which comes from the River Thames, impregnated with all the filth of London and Westminster. Human excrement is the least offensive part of the concrete, which is composed of all the drugs, minerals, and poisons used in mechanics and manufacture, enriched with the putrefying carcasses of beasts and men, and mixed with the scouring of all the wash tubs, kennels, and common sewers within the bills of mortality. End quote. These historical accounts give an eerily similar description of the current state of society surrounding food production and safety as well as fecal and waste disposal. 
They juxtapose the ideologies that underlie that which we currently do and that which has sustained human life for thousands of years. What's more disturbing is that modern civilizations have taken both of these ideas and combined them and combine them into a regulated industry, much worse than the centralized mixed waste disposal alone. Add to this the trend towards corporatist fascism, including poor state regulation of industries it owns and benefits from in governments around the world, and you have a recipe for a human excrement food-related disaster. Now that essentially is the first half of this piece. Biosolids, part one. Portland must poop. Humanure and the farmers of 40 centuries. When we return from our upcoming break in just a moment, we'll get into the second part of this article that, again, is an exclusive to Food World Order posted to gutbrainmanipulation.blogspot.com, and it comes from our man Adam Campbell in Nova Scotia, who himself has taken a little bit of a break as well, as everyone should do. We note oftentimes Remember to enjoy yourself. That's ultimately why we're fighting for these things and trying to spread the word about this kind of information. And as I said, I have a passion to share information. I come from a radio and theatrical sound design background in my home state of West Virginia. And I essentially just turned the, the radio and theater sound design and love for music and media into the alternative media and flipped it around into being something connected to the news and sharing it with you because many hands make light work we'll be back on corbett report radio stay tuned <laughs> 